This is one of multiple videos where I'm answering questions about CML that I've received. In a previous video, which I've linked here and below, I showed you how to export topologies from within CML. So export the topology, but also export the configurations. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to connect your CML topologies to the outside world. In other words, how to bridge your topologies to the outside or how to NAT them to the outside. In this topology, I've got a Cisco IOS V router. I pre-built this just to save time so you don't have to wait for this device to boot up. The only configuration I've done on this device is configure its name as router one. And I've also configured gigabit zero zero to use DHCP. In other words, it should get an IP address from the outside world when I bridge this device to my physical network. When I say physical network, I mean the wireless network that my Mac is connected to. Using a Mac here doesn't have any physical connections. It's connected to a wireless network at the moment. So what I'm gonna do now is drag an external connector into my topology. I'll show you how to do bridged first and then I'll show you how to use NAT. When I click on this and go to edit config, by default notice it's using NAT, but I wanna use bridged as my interface type. That's basically all you need to do. And then what you can do is connect your device to the external connector. So I've connected, that didn't display very nicely, so let me show you how it's connected. I've connected gigabit zero zero to my external connector in this topology. Now that's the only configuration required, but don't forget to start up your external connector, otherwise it won't work. So make sure that you click play to start this up. And now when I go to the console of my router, hopefully show IP interface brief will show me that I've received an IP address from the outside world. Now it might take it a while. Notice this has booted up. It's showing green at the moment. I don't have a console to that device. It's currently acting as a bridge. But when I go back to my router, go to console, I should get an IP address. What I'll do just to speed this up is shut the interface down and then no shut it so that it requests an IP address. Show IP interface brief. Notice I've received this IP address 10.0.0.180 and I should be able to ping google.com, which I can. So I've been able to bridge the router to the outside world. Now I'll run a Telnet application on my Mac so that I can Telnet to the router. The IP address I wanna Telnet to is 10 0 0 Port 23, so that's all I need to do. And let's open up a connection. Now I'm told that there's an error and that's probably because I wanna create some passwords. So let's go line VTY zero to four password Cisco transport input all enable password Cisco. Now that's bad practice. You shouldn't be using Telnet in the first place, but I just wanna show you that it's possible. And notice I'm able to now Telnet into the router. To prove the point, I'm gonna use the send command. So I'm gonna say send star and type the message hello. Press control Z and notice that message appears on this terminal as well as my Telnet terminal. So again, send, star, this is Telnet. Control Z or Control Z if you prefer. Notice the message was received here. So I'm Telneting from my Mac into the CML or viral topology and I'm connected to that router. Show users here will show me that I've got a user connected on VTY0. Notice it's David's MacBook that's connected to the router. I could clear line 578 as an example. So rather type clear line 578 and notice my Telnet connection has been closed. So that's an example of me getting the router to connect to a physical network and me being able to access the router from the outside. 
That's once again an example of using a bridged network. I'll remove that link to that external connector. And what I'll do now is add a, another external connector to my topology. In this example, however, I'll use NAT. So rather than using a bridge topology, I'm gonna to use NAT to connect to the external connector. And I'll start this up. Now with NAT, I won't be able to connect to the router. It's gonna NAT my internal topology to the outside. So if I click on the router and go to console, show IP interface brief, what I'll do is shut this interface down. Originally, the IP address was this. I'll no shut it. Show IP interface brief. We should get a IP address in a different subnet because the cloud will be allocating the IP address in this example. This external connector has allocated this IP address to the router. I should hopefully still be able to ping the internet, which I can, so I can ping google.com, but I can't connect to that router from the outside because it's not bridged. I'm being natted to the outside topology. Now be careful with bridging. This is pure bridging. So you could introduce a spanning tree loop from your CML topology into the physical network. If you bridge multiple switches into the physical network and you don't implement spanning tree properly, you could have a loop and you could bring down your CML network as well as a physical network. So be careful with bridging. But that's an example of how to bridge a CML device to the outside world and how to NAT it. Now you could add an additional device to your topology, but don't forget then to advertise a default route into your CML topology from this iOS V device as an example. So if this is your device connecting to the physical network, make sure that you advertise a default route or additional routes to your CML network so that other devices in your topology can connect to the outside world as well. So I hope that's answered the questions of how to bridge CML topologies to the outside and how to connect back into CML topologies. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and please click on the bell to get notifications. That really does help me with the YouTube robots. I'm David Bumble once again. I wanna wish you all the very best. Yeah.